Joining me here on set is Edouard uh, Salsas, a lawyer and specialist in international arbitration and a member of both the Paris and Madrid bars. Thank you very much um, for being with us. Um, first of all, um, we've seen the Spanish government in recent days become increasingly desperate in a bid to try and stop this vote in Catalonia from taking place. We've had um, uh, mayors investigated, the budget controlled, um, independence uh, meetings banned. Will this strategy of the Madrid government actually work and bear fruit, do you think? Well, the the issue here, it's it's going a little bit further. They've, they've even threatened to cut electricity in the voting centres. Uh, as you said, it looks like a desperate attempt to avoid the unavoidable. Uh, it, this is a, a, a democratic tsunami and there's too many people involved in this. It's It's millions of people who want to vote in Catalonia and it looks like that, that, that it's going to be impossible to stop all these people from, from going to vote on October the 1st. And I'd say it worse, even worse, uh, Catalans living abroad, like me, mm -hmm. have already received the documents to vote. So uh, virtually now there are Catalan people already voting in this referendum. Uh, this week we've seen uh, has been an inflection point in, in, in all this strategy because while Madrid is still attempting to, to prevent people from going to vote, we've seen uh, inter relevant international reactions from the American administration or from, from the president of the EU Commission uh, who have said that actually, well, um, they would like to have a referendum agreed with Madrid. It would be like a peaceful transition mm -hmm. uh, to, to independence if the yes wins, it's all of this is subject if the yes wins, but in any case, if there's no such agreed referendum and the yes wins, well, they will live with it. So actually we're in a, in a situation where uh, international, relevant international actors are starting to acknowledge that this vote will take place. It's, it's very likely that the, the yes will win this vote and they are starting to say that well, they will live with it. So it looks like the only people who are not aware that this is happening, it's actually happening, it's in Madrid. What will happen if the yes vote, as you suggest, um, comes through and they win? Well, uh, in Madrid they say uh, they're going to, to, to prosecute criminally uh, the mayors, all the people who were involved in this, in, this, in this referendum. As I said, there's too many people, it's far too many people. We're talking about more than 700 mayors. Can mm. you imagine 700 people? Mm. It, it's, there's too many people involved to, to pursue this strategy. Uh, on the other hand, the Catalan govern, government has already prepared a battery of uh, legal measures to disconnect Catalonia from Spain. So basically, if the yes wins, and again, I say subject to for the yes winning, uh, virtually we would have a, a region starting to function autonomously, disconnected from Spain, and that and they would simply not recognize the, the, the Spanish government as a, as a legitimate uh, government. So uh, I would say international actors, foreign countries, and uh, especially and more importantly, foreign companies will start operating in, a, in an independent country. So that's why it's so important to find a political solution to this situation, because we're, we're in a confrontation situation. Both sides have the, the, the tools to pursue uh, the, their objectives. And basically what, what would ideally we would have to, you know, meet around the table and, you know, debate this issue and try to agree and find at least a, a, a concentrated uh, solution to this to this to this long lasting issue of the Catalan independence. Okay, um Edouard Salsas, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for coming in to speak to us here on